Welcome to Voodoo Warlock Episode 2. In this episode, I'm going to be doing the Cloven Jaw Scourge Blockade, also known as STK Part 1. So let's take a look at the enhancements. Um, level 5 now, and really just been focusing on picking up uh, MRR and PRR, also uh, universal spell power and light spell power here. I did get the first Eldritch Burst and that's maxed out. This is this is your bread and butter as an enlightened spirit is your bursting. It's just burst, 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 burst and everything dies. It's so awesome. And um, don't forget that uh, these auras that you're getting down here are things that do have to be activated. Uh, I was just outside a few minutes ago in the steam tunnels and I got feared and I'm like, what? I'm supposed to be immune to fear. And I realized I didn't have the Aura of Courage activated, so make sure that you grab that out of your enhancement list and uh, pull it into a hotbar and activate it. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't function very well. And so my plan, you know, I'm going to get most of the stuff here in the Enlightened Spirit Tree. I'm not going to go for any of the things that boost hirelings and, and charms and stuff. I'm going to get most of everything else. I won't bother with the action boost. Uh, I won't bother with resist energies, for example. Um, but I'm going to be spending quite a few points over here in Tainted Scholar. And my plan is to spend about 21 to 23 points, maybe even up to 25 or 27. Um, but my biggest motivation is to pick up tier 4 and 8, which gives me Death Ward as a spell in my spell book, which is totally awesome. But the great thing is there are so many things I'm going to pick up on the way to that, they're going to be really helpful to the build too. So I'm not just, you know, wasting 20-something action points to get Death Ward. I'm getting, I'm going to get all this pack damage. I'm going to get at least 3d4 pack damage, maybe even this one up here. I'm going to get an extra point of charisma. Over here, I'm going to spend these points for constitution. So I'm going to get extra charisma here. I'm also going to pick up Feigned Health. This is totally awesome. This is one when I did my Tainted Scholar life on Ginger Spice, I didn't realize the benefit of this one right away. I didn't even pick it up right away. Um, but this one reads, and I'm going to read the Tier 3. It says, when you cast spells on yourself or allies, you grant temporary hit points equal to 100% charisma of your charisma and these last for three minutes and I was thinking oh when I buff myself I'm gonna get you know 30 30 temporary hit points who cares well it actually works like when you cast use wands on yourself or scrolls on yourself or you haste yourself or, so it's it's constant and it's just you know the, with the warlock you really have to get used to that you're living with temporary hit points that's a big part of your existence before Warlock, temporary hit points, for the most part, were just like a little tiny bonus that really didn't mean a whole lot. Um, there were a couple of exceptions to that, but generally speaking, you know, temporary hit points weren't really that big of a thing uh, for the most part. But it, when you're a Warlock, that's part of your existence, and you have to get used to playing that way, and that those temporary hit points are sort of part of your proactive or, you know, front end or preventative healing. I, I don't know what a good term for that is, but um, your temporary hit points are, are sort of replace healing in a conventional sense and are a big part of what keeps you alive. And, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to work up to, like, Penetrating Blast. It just seems very unnecessary. Uh, I'm going to be doing Light, Force, and Sonic Damage in my pack, or in my, yeah, my pack and my tree selection already. So try to change the Force to Untyped. It, it just doesn't seem necessary. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, that's enough about uh, Enhancements. Uh, let's look at uh, what I'm doing for gear. Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time you know, trying to perfect anything. There's nothing particularly special going on here, but I'll go over the choices that I've made. Uh, resistance 4, standard for level 5 tune that's a crafter. Uh, still got invulnerability on the armor, that's the same as before, just got additional plus 1 on there. Improves, improved false life on the bracers, 
extra hit points, always a bonus. Impulse 48 on uh, this ring, and then I've got Radiance 48 on this ring, and then Resonance 48 on the Shard of Power. Melee Alacrity 10% and Feather Falling on the boots. Ogre Power plus 4, Strength plus 4 on the gloves. Belt of Moderate Fortification. It is worth, in my humble opinion, getting a Moderate Fortification item. Some people just wait until they can wear Heavy Fort, and I, I do find value in getting a Moderate Fort. 75, you know, that's that's pretty good. 75% is pretty good. Uh, this is just some junk I found. I haven't bothered trying to figure out something better to put in my cloak slot yet, but Spellcraft plus 3. <laughs> uh, Charisma 4 on the necklace, and then Con 4 on the uh, on the helmet slot. For the shield, plus 4 heavy Darkwood shield. I am level 5, so I am using those absolute minimum level 4 versions, so Darkwood with the shield and Skirmish chainmail on the armor. And then finally, this is that same flame-touched iron rapier. Now I have plus two acid and bleeding on it. And I've already picked up my blasting chime for that for level seven. I'm not going to bother upgrading it to tier three so that I can make it craftable. And we're at a level five. I the reason is because I don't know yet. You know, if voodoo is going to become like a tune that I'm going to want to play all the time and going to want to do a lot of pass lives on. So. You know, I'm just going to get the level 7 base version now and use it at level 7. And, you know, if I decide that I'm going to do a bunch of past lives on Voodoo, then m maybe I'll invest the resources to uh, make that tier 3 and uh, make it craftable. Uh, for feats, I did pick up Maximize at level 3. So, uh, I misspoke before. I said I said I picked up Shield Mastery, but I actually picked up Shield Proficiency General because you don't even start with Shield Proficiency, so Shield Mastery would be the next tier. So right now my two feats were Shield Proficiency, and then I have Maximize at level three. I'll take Empower at level six, and Maximize and Empower do affect your bursts. intelligence runes in there. I can't get those. Burst and everything dies. How can you not love that? Now, I do want to say that the burst has been uh, nerfed since I did Ginger Locks. Uh, Ginger Spice's his first Warlock life when I did the Enlightened Spirit on her. So the burst, which I have here, um, uh, let me pull it up here so you can read it better. Okay, so the last sentence reads, this ability shares cooldown with Cleave and the damage scales with 120%. Of spell power, it used to scale with 150% of spell power, so they brought that down by 30%. It's still awesome. So the other thing that they uh, changed is shining through. This gives you temporary hit points equal to 12 times your Constitution score. It used to be 15 times your Constitution score. I'm sure that it is still awesome. Everything died but the champ. And, you know, I don't even have Empower yet. So next level, it's going to be even awesomer.
yesterday I just posted the first episode of Ginger Locks Life 3. That was a funny one to do. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I was pretty uh, jazzed up that night. I, I don't know why. It just, I, I guess it was like coffee or sugar. Or maybe I had a glass of wine. I don't know. Sometimes I like to have a glass of wine, but I'm not a big drinker, so it definitely wasn't definitely wasn't drunk or anything. Here's a funny puzzle, um, and it, it doesn't really matter these days, but you know when this stuff came out and tunes you know weren't anywhere near as powerful as they are now. Um, I guess it would have been more important, but um, so here you know you want to run the light from one side to the other, and it sort of you know intuitively you think, oh I want to you know I want to light up these corner boxes here you know. But you actually want to avoid those because when you when you light those up, then it spawns spiders. Not <laughs> by today's standards, you just, you know, just destroy the spiders right away. But um, I suppose it would have been a little more beneficial to avoid lighting them before. Let's see. Hit that, and then where's there's the spider. You know, I talked about how drow in my last video was not an optimum choice for you know a tank, but you know, the drow starts with you can only start with a 16 con instead of an 18. I usually like to start with an 18 con on all my tunes, but with all the extra hit points I'm gonna be getting as warlock, you know that's not gonna be a big deal. Don't think I talked about my ability scores last time and so what I did is I actually only started with um, I think I started with a 19 charisma and that allowed me to put some extra points in intelligence and dexterity I think I put a couple extra points there and so it was like 16 con 19 charisma and then I think maybe like well it says 13 intelligence and 10 dexterity.
Oh, not strong enough. So sad. I don't think I have any kind of bursty thingy that I can use. No. Guess the human necromancer is going to live another day. When I was, um, I was in a, I was a guest on DDO cast, uh, last, uh, I guess it was two weeks ago, and we talked about U26 and 27 review, and, and the host, Patrick, asked me to give a letter grade to Warlock, just overall, and I gave it a B minus, but I qualified that, I gave the past life an A plus, because the past life for Warlock, totally awesome, has universal appeal, just it was perfect because it's gonna make every everybody that likes to knock out past lives for those bonuses is gonna want warlock because it's awesome. Nine extra MRR for you know for free is is totally awesome. Okay, but I gave you know you know the class in general a B minus, but I said that you know it needs polishing. I think there are a lot of things that that need to be given some additional attention because there are some animations that are just totally missing or some that are really lame. Uh, but one of them that I d I'm not crazy about is the burst. You know, the, the sound that it does is really weak. When you think about like energy bursts, it's like this really cool looking explosion and it sounds really cool. And that, and then the bird, it's just kind of, you know, like it looks kind of neat. I'd like to see them like turn it into like a firework graphic with like a firework sound or something like that. would be really cool really flashy and cool and a lot of fun. Uh, so that's just one of the... Now obviously that doesn't affect you know, the the efficacy of it. That's just flavor. But um, but there are definitely other things that uh, affect the playability too that need polish and, and one of them that I talked about in the Ginger Lock series was how, you know, when you're doing the bursts and um, Blast. <laughs> I'm still getting the terminology mixed up. And I've switched over to blasting right now. I guess it doesn't matter when I'm swimming. But, like, when you kill one mob, and it, it should, like, auto, like, ideally, auto just auto target the next mob. And the next shot after one mob dies should just shoot to the next mob. Instead, after you kill a mob, the next shot flies off into the ceiling or flies off into the floor or something. If, and then the one after that then will auto target. So it's not it's not updating the next target fast enough. And that that should even work with uh breakables too. So I killed him, next one goes in the floor, crate, next one goes in the floor and wall, crate, next one goes in the floor and wall, and then crate. Instead of constantly upgrading updating to the next actual target. But I'm not going to be using the blast very much. This is going to be burst, 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 burst. But it is nice to have that option to um, to switch to because there are going to be times that I'm going to want to be able to do ranged. But I'm I'm not happy about the range of of the burst. I had a discussion with somebody on my channel about that. Um, but I I really would like to see the range increased at least a little bit. I think it's it's too short right now. If you think about how far a ranger can shoot an arrow or how far an RD can shoot you know their bolts or their blasts. It's it's really really short. Sometimes you need to hit mobs or a little bit further away. I'm 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 not I don't you know warlocks don't need to be able to hit mobs from across the map like you know a bow user can or something but a little bit farther would be really nice. But uh, the discussion I had with someone was about, you know, I was saying that they should double it and then also make it so that it can be enlarged. So then, you know, if you had enlarged, it would be functionally quadruple the range now. And they thought that was a little bit too far. And, and I can see that. I mean, maybe it's a little too far. 
but uh, I definitely think it needs to be longer than it is now. crappy low-level chest, I always get this one. I can never walk by it. When I did Ginger's uh, Warlock Lives, one of the pieces of gear that I used was the uh, Braces of Wind, you know, because they have the permanent blur, which I really liked, and they had the, the dodge, which was really cool. And I thought that Voodoo had that, but, you know, she was an air savant, so I was like, oh yeah, I got that at Voodoo. But I was really surprised that I only had the, the highest tier version. So I think, yeah, that stuff came out like. I must have got that like after she was capped and never even did TRs after that or something. But uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to end up investing in that or not. Oh, this is the end right here. Hey, thanks for watching episode number two. If you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions about my build, you can respond on my companion thread in the DDO forums. And if you happen to be on Saralona, you are welcome to send me a tell.